next one I want to show you is uh, this one here, PE. Eh, I think we'll do the unpacking with Ollie Debug. All right. So you're gonna, I've got this same putty file, and we're going to pack it. So um, inside this program, the hash should be 9F9. We've already verified that for this putty, so I know it's OK. And this is my uh, Flare VM. All right. So I want to compress this file. So I'm going to go here. And uh, I think I'm already in a good directory for this. Yeah, here I am. And I've got my original file called putty there. So I can use UPX to compress it. UPX is an open source file compressor. And this does something kind of strange, which we're going to see. Putty comp dot exe putty dot exe. All right. So it took this 531 kilobyte file and it shrunk it to 267 kilobytes on the disk. All right. And now we can check the hash again. So if I go to that file, putty comp, right click, and hash my files, which should be an option here. Hmm, maybe they took that away in this version of um, the uh, Flare VM. Well, we have hash calc anyway. All right, and I'm just looking for a SHA-256, a putty comp, and it should start with 745, and it does. All right, so this is good. Now, the file is half the size, but when you run it, it opens up the same way. So that is interesting, and um, we want to find out how that works. So let's take a look at PE Studio which is one of the many wonderful tools included with this uh, Flare VM. All right, so in here we open PuTTY, which is in Downloads, PuTTY. All right, and this is going to tell you a lot of information about this file, and it's spending some time processing it. So while it's doing that, I'm going to open PuTTY Comp for comparison, PE Studio again and open putty comp all right and then these will both process and we can compare them all right so if you go to say the putty and select the first item you see some hash values with this familiar 9f9 and then you will see indicators um, and the next item down, indicators will tell you if it detects anything malicious about this file. It's still working on determining that, and it's still working here. It takes some time. It's just running through a lot of tests to see what it finds. And then it's going to show you virus total responses, of course, and imports. And virus total shows me that one engine called Apex detects putty as malicious, which is foolish. And this is a thing I've come across a lot. There are false positives in viruses. Frequent sample files I put on my website are often marked as malicious by amateurs. And these often have like uh, amateur people in other countries that can't tell what's going on. They just find it on a web page like mine and decide it's evil. Anyway, here's the indicators. These are. Um, the identifiers uh, for various things that it, it's so this has strings tagged as a blacklist it references blacklisted libraries it references a url pattern so these are indicators of possibly malicious activity but they're very weak indicators except for virus total this compressed file however now has 14 indicators it references more url patterns and import symbols it contains writable and executable sections, which, by the way, is a big no-no that we'll see a lot. This is one of the fundamental security principles of all modern operating systems. No memory segment should be both writable and executable because a hacker can write data there and then run it. Um, 
but putty, the compressed version, has that. All right, and then imports, the original, if you go down to imports, which are libraries it uses. These are Windows API calls, which is how all Windows software works. You just call these Windows functions that Microsoft wrote and execute them to control the machine. And this calls like create window, register a class, get queue status, and so on. It has the original, this is the um, original, has 312 imports with 55 of them regarded as suspicious, which is, by the way, another very weak indicator that it uses unexpected Windows API calls. All this really tells you is that the developer is not using uh, modern coding procedures because this is an old version of the program. But if I go to this one, the compressed version only has 14 imports of which four are flagged. So this is the sign that something very strange has happened to this program. It hardly uses any of the Windows API anymore. And that's a sign of it being compressed. All right, now if you look at the sections in putty.exe, which is, I think I have to go, yes, yeah, sections. Where are the sections? Losing my mind. There we are, sections. All right. So here you see them, text, R data, data, and resource. These are the normal sections you'll see in any Windows executable file. These are called portable executable files. The text section contains the executable instructions, and the resource section contains things like icons, and the data section contains data used by the file. So those are the typical sections you see in a file. But if you look at the sections in the compressed file, it is UPX0, UPX1, and resource. So this is what UPX does. It compresses the memory sections on the disk, and then when you run it, it will decompress them and load them correctly in memory. All right. And so if you compare raw size and virtual size for these, um, the raw size here is 367K, and the virtual size is very much the same. And that's true of every section. And this is because a normal executable has these sections stored on the, on the disk. And when you load it, it just copies the sections one by one directly into memory. So that what's in memory is just a one-to-one -one copy of what was on the disk with a little bit of extra white space in between the sections. But in this one, you've got a raw, the compressed one, the raw size is zero, but the virtual size is 249 kilobytes. So that's very strange. And that's because it's got a section that is completely missing on the disk, but it will be created by decompression later. All right. And you can notice that the um, in the original file, the text section has permissions. It is executable, but not writable. And the data section is writable, but not executable. And none of their other sections have any permissions at all. This is a correctly organized compiled Windows program that has code in one area that's executable, but cannot be changed. And the data that needs to be changed is in this data section, and you can't execute that. That's the way it should be. And this is the UPX file has these red flagged marks that writable and executable, therefore self-modifying, are on both of these sections. So these sections are doing something strange and non-standard that is not recommended. All right. Anyway, this gives you an introduction to the way Windows code looks. And um, you can play with them. And now there's some uh, analysis to be done here. And then you can examine how it works when you actually run it and see how it looks in memory. And you can even decompress a compressed file using OllieDebug, getting it back from the copy in memory. And this is what you have to do at malware that might be packed with a modified packer that you cannot easily reverse. Uh, so you can take the copy from memory and write it back to disk and therefore see the internal code. So I'll stop.